Hey, so much to do. A gorgeous Monday afternoon. Great to have you aboard Monday, the 7th of May. Let's jump right in. If you have thoughts, bring them to the table. What an absolute clown show we have operating the Detroit Pistons. I mean, first and foremost, what the hell took three weeks to get to something that should have taken three minutes? Now, I look, I admit, I thought we were so far down the road, i.e. a week from the scouting combine, that it was almost going to be difficult to get rid of Stan, that you were almost stuck. But then again, I was thinking rationally that the time to fire Stan was weeks ago. The time to execute a search for a president of basketball operations and scouts and and, and a hierarchy was weeks ago. But then again, I'm an adult and I'm clear minded and I'm just like, look, this is how the the world works. I'm not crazy. I think Tom Gores is crazy. They took three weeks at the uh, Beverly Hills Chalet of meetings and it was multiple meetings with Stan and multiple meetings with the players and meetings with Bauer to do what exactly to get to the end of the sidewalk that we all knew was probably going to happen anyways. See, that's the problem. The scouting combines in a week, you're going to have a hard time putting a whole, whole damn franchise together. But then again, let me help you with where this is probably going. Now, if we go back to the Blake trade, I said to you, then I think Gorris had a ton to do with it. I don't think it was some Stan Hail Mary. Gorris at a minimum empowered Stan to throw it at a maximum for Stan's hand and put the football in it. So we had that conversation. That's important because of this. You made a move to give up a first-round pick and give up any financial flexibility for years to come. It's a bad idea to do that if if and when you're going to fire your coach and president of basketball operations. It, it's, it's a window into the cluelessness of Tom Gorse. That's one. But now, now here's what's going to happen. This is my best guess for you. I will give you, since we're in the spirit of the Kentucky Derby, I will give you very short odds. Arn Tellum is going to make this higher, and he's hiring a client or a former client. So when you see Brent Berry's name come out, go check the, check the data. Former client. You know, you're going to see a list. I will be very surprised if the Pistons' next president of basketball operations is not a former Arn Tellum client. I'll be shocked. I think it's pretty clear with Stan out of the way, Arn's going to run this show. Now, whether it's Brent Barry, I've been told B.J. Armstrong could be in the mix. Uh, I know the Chauncey dream is out there. There's one problem. If Chauncey were hired here, he would have hired David Fisdale. Can't happen now. David Fisdale coaches the Knicks. Go on the flow chart back to the beginning. This is why you don't waste three weeks with nonsense. Take that for data. Fisdale would have been good for business. But this is where we are. Scouting combines in a week. You don't have a president of basketball operations. You don't have a general manager. You don't have a head coach. You don't have a first-round pick. You don't have any salary cap space. And the one thing you do have is a $7 million trade exception. It's a complete disaster. And it falls at the feet beyond Stan Van Gundy to Tom Gores. Tom Gores rubber-stamped the acquisition of the worst contract in basketball, Blake Griffin. At a maximum, he forced it. And at a minimum, he empowered it. It's his fault. This is why I said the day you traded for Blake, this is a bad idea. You can't do this unless you have a rock-solid organization. You make this move and then you fire people three months down the line, it's catastrophic. Well, this is where you are. Because Tommy T-Shirt has no idea what he's doing. For my money, you're dealing with West Coast James Dolan, an owner of infinite wealth and of minimal acumen. And unfortunately, you, the fan, have to pay the price for this. This franchise is a dumpster fire. I think it's embarrassing on Monday, May 7th, to fire Stan Van Gundy. Three weeks? Are you kidding me? This could have been done three weeks ago. You could have had an organization in place. And I think what's going to happen now, since, hey, look, it's conjecture theater. I'm just telling you from people I talk to and from my own mindset about how things work. You know, we we go back to the reports out of New York about Arn Tellum. I think Arntellum now assumes a major power role here. 
now stands out of the way. Arn becomes Goris's only trusted confidant. I think Arn is going to go a different direction. They're going to go from having one chef in the kitchen to an entire uh, room full of line cooks. And I think that's equally dangerous. Because remember, if you go out and you hire Brent Berry or you hire B.J. Armstrong or you go out and hire any of Arn Tellum's former clients, you're still going to need to hire a staff of people to teach this person how to do the job. I mean, that, that's the cold, hard facts of this. That's how you end up with factions. That's how you end up with, with real issues, real tension. And, and the last piece to the puzzle, and I'm not, and again, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not, I'm not being negative. But the reason I didn't engage with Doug and Scott about a head coach or ideas about a head coach are, are this. I don't know anyone who wants this job. Now, if, uh, for instance, let's say you had brought in Chauncey weeks ago. And let's assume his choice was David Fisdale. You may have a shot to get a coach you have no business having if he knows that the guy running the organization is his guy and he knows that you have the amount of time necessary. This is a job that has no easy fix. You have no escape routes. You have no fire escape. There are no stairs. Like the building's on fire. You don't have any outs. So... You got to really think about this now. Let's say you hire Brent Berry or B.J. Armstrong. Who the hell is lining up to take this job? It's going to be with a first-time basketball executive, right? Let's say it's Brent Berry. And then you're going to do what exactly? You do not have a first-round pick. You do not have cap space. You have a $101 million payroll. And, and it's a roster that lacks any flexibility whatsoever. Blake can't play the three. Andre can't play the four. Excuse me. So, yes, I, am I happy Stan Van is gone? Sure. But you waited so long that I can't really get excited about it. The combine is in a week. Head coaches are already off the board. Searches are already in full swing. And newsflash, you know, jobs like Milwaukee are just far more attractive than your job. And I'm not going to go down the road of coach until I know who the president of basketball operations is. Who's the day-to-day general manager? Are we replacing this scouting staff that is outdated? Where many still date back to the Dumars era? See, these are all the questions, and guys, I don't have the answer. Well, it's funny you say that because Rod Beard actually just posted on Twitter. He said, indications are that the Pistons won't do a complete house cleaning in front office and coaching staff. There could be some retention. Then you know what? Then I have no interest in discussing this team any further. You are going to fire your president of basketball operations and your head coach, but you're not going to do a clean sweep. What what human being is hanging around LCA or was hanging around deep in the bowels of the old palace that is worth retaining? Do you want to help me with that again? Who exactly is worth saving? Who am I running? What young up-and-comer is here that I've just got to save? This franchise is rudderless, honestly. And short of tripping into a miracle, i.e. you win the draft lottery, save your pick, and acquire a, a, a transformational talent, I'm telling you, you are going nowhere under the stewardship of Tom Gores. You have arguably one of the three worst owners in basketball. This guy has no idea what he's doing. And now I think you're going to lean on R and tell him to make that higher. But here's the best part. You mean to tell me you'll bring somebody in, but they're not going to have the autonomy to do a clean sweep and hire who they want, how they want, when they want. Yeah. Sorry. Bad idea. You're basically doomed. That's how I spell it. Now, I'd love to talk to you, the people, about this. I don't have a cute question. I don't have a this or that. I'm not asking you for your best Stan memory. I just want to talk about it. But Stan Van's gone. I think that's a win. We're happy about that. The problem, why did it take three weeks? You were so far down the line with this, I think many were like me, were just convinced he was probably going to stay because you were running out of time. Scouting combine, I believe, is a week from now, maybe a week from Wednesday in Chicago. Like, it's asinine. 
multiple vacancies have already been filled, all while you were lunching and brunching in Beverly Hills. You knew Stan was a dead man walking in February. 248-539-9797. Your ticket texts are welcome. If you don't want to get all warmed up on the phone, you don't want to get all heated up, 97136, feel free. Hop in, do your thing. But Gore has made some comments in the statement I will read to you, and I think they are absolutely, beyond shadow of a doubt, false. He made comments that are absolutely false. False. I'll, I'll explain what those are. Next. Sorry, had to take a breath there. Hi.